this, I was like, I did not check what the matchup was. I just asked if it was the mean ZG coming back. And I was like, oh. <laughs> only because, though, only because, it, again, it feels like it's been kind of a fast day, right? Yeah. So it's been kind of a quick day. And so I'm like, oh, but this is my last one. My last one's on Liz, but I'm like, is it actually my last series? Because, like, <laughs> it feels kind of too quick. So I was like, oh, maybe I've, have I done two in a row? Just, yeah. So many questions went through my head in the same moment. <laughs> and I was just like, <laughs> completely like, like protect myself, I guess. So disaster, disaster. It was amazing. We are truly back in the circus tent. These two clowns. Um, <laughs> these clowns. Why do they? You know why? Why do they let the old cast just keep on uh, coming back every time, man? <laughs> you know, get the new casters here. They can at least do play intros and everything properly. I know, right? I also can't believe you guys couldn't think of alliteration for for Ryung. Like, I uh, on the spot. Okay, go on then. Nothing. I was gonna go with like ravishing rebel Ryung. The ravishing rebel Ryung. Yeah. yeah, I like that. That's cool. Yeah. I, I I just, you know, it wasn't my job, you know, I was... <laughs> it wasn't your job? You know, no, you know, I didn't become the alliteration guy, so... I didn't yeah, put that on kinda, myself. I'm gonna put you in that corner. Yeah, exactly. I'm not gonna get caught up in it. And then I tried, and, and I showed exactly why I shouldn't try. It's okay, I tried oh, an English accent least. earlier today, so... Yeah, um... I, honestly, I... I left me with a lot of questions. I did like that beer more thought, but my voice was the push one, though, compared to Galaris's. I... Yes. That was, uh, yeah. That, that got was some interesting. question marks from me. <laughs> Especially because I, I keep forgetting what your accent's like, kind of called, or you know where you're you're from, um, home <clears throat> yeah. base. Well, but you have a Twitch worse accent somewhere, kinda, right? Yeah. Twitch ch Twitch chat was, was kind of right, which said if you actually know where I'm from, <laughs> my voice is very posh. <laughs> my accent's very posh <laughs> in comparison. But um, yeah, com compared to Kalars, I don't think I've got nothing on that man. I was definitely, when I was doing the English accent, as we watched DVP unfold in very normal ways, guys, um, I was absolutely thinking of, like, how you make fun of basically, like, a leprechaun. Right. <laughs> Which isn't even right. <laughs> it's Irish. Yeah. I was like, toy, 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 toy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, honestly, I was sad. I was like, I was already typing out question marks, and then you went in, and I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> what is going on? <laughs> the enter button so hard, so fast. Oh gosh! Ooh. So some uh, some ZV. Do we introduce players? The lasers in the bottom, sounds at the top. You guys will figure it out. And uh, yeah, uh, you know, to talk about this a little bit, I wouldn't want to make a bet really on who wins this because I feel like Zound can be great some days and then a little bit off on others, and very much the same for a laser, right? I feel like one thing that these two players have lacked as of late is a little bit of consistency. Yes, I think that is actually very, very true. Where you can drive home the uh, story wise with like both of them have flashes of brilliance like very very good right down kind of emerged faster than people expected uh I actually i think <laughs> the same gstl that i was thinking of when i was talking to tabeo earlier where there was a lot of protoss that ended up getting into the top eight uh and that was one of his first i think real push to mm -hmm. the <laughs> the main starcraft market and then he's just been consistently good taking off some very surprising series and kind of almost not exactly a cult favorite but there are people who are real diehard f fans of zown and then a laser it's not that he you know he's he's kind of emerged because he's been with us for so long but then those flashes of brilliance can include like 2017 being the first foreigner to take out dark right getting yep Kind of deep into a, a BlizzCon, which is really, really, really nice at that time, too. But uh, ultimately not getting those championships. So it really kind of depends, not just on who shows up, but I sometimes feel like for a laser, when he gets pushed. I mean, to go with the cliche, like the laser overlords, right? If he gets pushed when he's supply block and he's building 10 overlords at once, well, that's problematic. But if you kind of let him get past some of those problematic points i'll say like even now he's getting supply blocks unless i'm silly um then then he's he's really really scary to play against but yeah a little supply blocks yeah laser his, his results are kind of crazy like he had a win in valencia one time and then he got top eight in the you know blizzcon that year yeah they kind of like slowed down a little bit for him and then he, he just came back and got that second place gsl versus the world and it kind of feels like he's had that slow down again like top eight has been kind of his, you know, area to play in, and he's hit top eight a lot, but he's kind of found it difficult to break into top four again, e even though we've had a lot of, like, 
regional based competition as well, which if you'd asked me a couple of years ago, like top four of Europe, you know, over like six tournaments, I would say, well, at least one time, if not a couple of times, a laser should be in the top four, but he's never made that top four. Mm-hmm. It, it can be a weird place for a laser, kind of trying to sum him up. Uh, and for Zaun, I think he is absolutely always a, a force to be reckoned with. You always have to be scared of Zaun, but then occasionally the sometimes very unique playstyles it comes out with, kind of happening here, uh, fall very flat. Very flat indeed. But the last time these guys played very recently, it was dominating performance from Zaun. So just uh, not even a month ago, a couple weeks ago, home straight up. So there's mm -hmm. certainly that for a laser to work against. But again, I just could not help but think of the times where Zaun styles kind of fall flat and a laser is, uh, you know, allowed to, I guess, kind of do his thing. And this looked like a very oppressive Zerg, one that just punches and punches and punches and the poor Protoss can't get back up. Don't know who's really coming out right now. Only thing I can say is that Zaun is playing particularly different style. I mean, it's going into charge Archon, but the order of the build order was a, was a bit different. So you can see our Oracle's coming through this bottom side and uh, huh. didn't get deflected by some Queens. So plenty of Queens there and actually able to keep the Oracles back a bit as only Zaun's got a five base and Zaun is just going to get a nice quick Robo Bay, huh? Yeah. So when I say that his build was a little bit different, I was primarily thinking of the Forge versus Robo timings. Just kind of a little bit different, but I wasn't jotting them down in my notepad to really know the, the difference. It's just kind of, <laughs> yeah. there, there are times where you see someone emit the Forge for a while, emit the, the Robo for a while. There's times where you see that heavy emphasis on Twilight Council, and then, yeah, you hit that Archon charge on timing, which we thought was going to happen with Classic. This is a little bit different in those order of operations, but then especially with a supremely fast robotic spay, usually it is kind of, well, it, honestly, usually it is not robotic spay, right? And I think back to maybe some parting level styles of, and that's even Blink Colossus, not Charge Colossus Disrupt there, but obviously it's, it, it can be incorporated. I'm not saying it's the weirdest thing in the world, splash is splash, splash, splash is good, but that doesn't mean that Zaun can't possibly get that aggressive, right? So much is going into technology, so I almost wonder if this Warp Prism actually has any bite to it. Yeah, it feels like, what, like maybe a couple of Zealots, uh, Zealot Warp in at some point. Maybe just more of a threat on the map, something to kind of say to Laser, hey, look, you know, respect me at least a little bit, right? Like, I can counterattack you and so on. Don't just come and kind of hit me too hard, so. Yeah, and we do have the Oracle still cruising around a few lings as well. You know, because there's no Stalkers, it's kind of funny how inactive the game almost feels, right? Because you kind of lose that kind of early game pressure you usually get, and you just kind of sit here waiting for... The yeah. tech to come online, and I mean, a laser again, all of the upgrades in the next few moments, so a laser might be the first to really strike in this game. I think so, and I feel like that's where a laser does well, when he's yeah. allowed to do this. So again, you'd be very, very picky, but still, you know, a couple of supply blocks, maybe not the cleanest game, but ultimately getting to a maxed out Roach Bane Link composition and then just firing away on all cylinders against Zaun's defensive setup, which... Zaun also is, you know, apparently content to be on the defender side. He is going to have a couple of uh, good things going for him to defend against this, but I think this is where a laser is going to feel the most confidence. Let's see if he can get the damage done. Yeah, Bane speed about to finish up. That's going to help him a lot. As the Bane's actually didn't even need speed to get through for a lot of those zealots. Uh -huh. That's actually massive. And now they've got speed to keep chasing the probes and the extra warped in zealots away. So these archons are very much so on their own. The disruptors already fired. I mean, this is worst case scenario from the very beginning here for Zaun, who is being uh, chased down. These roaches get on top of that disruptor. We get the battery now as well. And now we might actually be able to start killing off some of these Archons. He did take a lot of Archon damage on this dive-in, though. Yeah. And I felt like the, the one thing that wasn't right, he should have just knocked down that super battery because he wasn't super eager, really, to get rid of the, uh, like, to get rid of the Disruptor because it already fired, right? So, knock the battery down, play it a bit slower, maybe even get reinforcements because you've already done a very good job initiating the fight. I'm with you. I am. I, I do think that it was getting to that time where the Disruptor was about to have a second shot, so I understand a laser wanting to get rid of that. And possibly in that exact moment, thinking that the dive would be worth it, basically compensating for maybe a bit of a ping issue. And this is on central, it's still not great. And expecting not to micro well against the disruptor. You kind of just like make it brute force mm -hmm. as opposed to a little bit more finesse. But I do think he took way too much damage to the Archons. It actually gave Zaun more of an opportunity to tackle the army. But 
it is still, as I've been saying, just punch after punch after punch, can down. Hold against round number two, three, four, five, six. Uh, more to come for sure. Right now he's got a Colossus on his side, but the shield battery is being targeted, I believe, by those lings as they speak. And the Nexus also could go down at the cost of, uh, well, actually the Archon suddenly just pop. Disruptors shoot out their shots, send the Roaches a little ways away, but they are still ultimately going to get that kill in the Nexus. Same time, however, a laser loses access to a base, 17 drones as well. A little bit of a tit for tat, but the Zaun Protoss army is a little bit stronger as a laser desperately tries to rebuild on some basic Roaches. This is uh, kind of rough, I think, for a laser here. <laughs> Those PP, I was, I was almost like, uh, is that some kind of weird GG? But, like, he did lose a base and, like, a lot of drones. It's like, he might be in some trouble. And Zao is kind of coming his way to maybe potentially kind of push on that point as well. So it's going to be an interesting couple of moments here to see if laser is going to hang on. Because, yeah, losing that amount of work has definitely hurts quite a lot. Yeah, I wonder if perhaps there is too much thrown sounds way there's not enough to actually defend i think so i think i i think there is going to be enough to defend but just barely and it's certainly going to be a odd game uh one of those ones that's almost very classic zerg versus protoss where you both dealt kind of the similar amounts of economic damage but one person is on an adrenaline rush and that's the zerg and the other guy the protoss is just kind of hoping to wait things out and play a little bit longer build up more of those key units but uh, sometimes the adrenaline rush is still kicking enough. That's quantity beats quality. That's the question. Yeah, no, it's... Uh, yeah, I definitely feel like Laser's time is already passing, you know? Like, yeah, you got a base, but I feel like Zaun's army... I guess it got a bit better for Laser because he popped those couple of Archons. If those Archons didn't die, I was going to be really worried because I don't know if there's like five or six Archons for this big push of Zaun. Yeah, that is like kind of terrifying. Like then, that's a lot of splash damage to kind of have to work against. That is kind of rough again. Let's see. So, like you can see, there's only one arc on here, so we're gonna go up to three. Uh, it, it feels like this is somewhat doable for a laser, especially on creep. And a little run by that's been turned away. Now he's gonna try and come in from an angle, but he doesn't even have banelings. He's only got three banelings morphing in. There's disruptors that are firing, and okay, one gets uh, killed, and the other one doesn't really connect. Good split from a laser. He does find some roaches at the end, find some more. I mean, for being on creep, that's definitely the one thing that's helping the laser out is these banes have to connect big, and they do. There was only three of them, and they got so many zealots low, actually giving you a chance here. And a laser's going to push this back. I feel like that was Zaun kind of messing up a little bit more than a laser oh. kind of playing great. Yeah, a little bit, a little bit. I think that there was some greatness to a laser's play. I mean, certainly some of those splits were very necessary. If he had taken yeah. one bad disruptor shot, that might have been enough to have Zaun continue pushing in. But I do think that Zaun maybe pushed a bit too aggressively. His army wasn't quite combined together. His war prism wasn't as safe as it seemed since the queens kind of came in from the left side, so he couldn't actually warp in. And yeah, everything came together at once exactly when necessary for a laser who takes back a decent supply lead, but we are still on kind of that base basic Zerg composition and not a super healthy economy with that, which makes it very scary. The laser at least manages to deny that fourth base now. It wants some more. wants a lot more, actually. Yep, he's just going to keep going for this right here. Disruptor Shot's fine. He has great splits again. And there's only so many Disruptor Shots you can use. I think they're all out right now, which is a perfect time for a laser to come through. All of the Zells keep getting hit by Bailings. I cannot emphasize enough how huge that is, right? Because if these banelings don't hit the zealots, the zealots just don't die. But now you're actually clearing those out. There's no splash damage left here. There's two oracles that are doing very well, and there's one colossus <laughs> that keeps popping out of the prism. And that might just be about enough to hold on, oh perhaps. Gosh. A new disruptor shows up as well. As uh, this nexus is probably going to live. There's the disruptor shot to absolutely guarantee that this nexus will survive at the end. Even with Ling showing up, I think the colossus should be okay. Wow, what a hold from Zaun. <laughs> but what a, again, a good set of fights from a laser. Again, the Banelings are just like magnetized to Zealots in this game. Yeah, I think that is one of the bigger issues for Zaun is that if you had any amount of Zealots adding a protective layer, they, this would not have been nearly as contentious. But they, they really are just all getting hit almost perfectly. So that's been 
a good point for a laser who really needed a victory or two like that to make it as close as it is, to make this battle continue on. And now he might even have a chance to swiftly go into the more to late game. He certainly is powering up his economy once again, finally got his base back up, added on a handful more drones, and is getting infestation pit. Zaun, he holds on, but he really did not save a lot of his expensive units, which has been... Unfortunately, more true than not for a lot of these fights. He's lost those those Archons were really pivotal. That made his counterattack just barely not good enough. And then in that last fight, he did lose almost all of his Disruptors. Eventually lost all of them, right? So that's hard to replace. And it's not that he's on four bases and he can kind of pick and choose who he wants to replace either. He can't just go right back into Charge Lot Immortal and amass him out of it, nor can he really go into a decent number of Disruptors and Colossus. So he is, yeah, having to pick and choose. Well, he gets that fourth base back up and a laser... I think maybe with a, a bit of a stronger streamline into the late game right now, since he seems to be very well protected on his side of the map. Mm -hmm. Lots of bases, lots of drones, lots of creep spread, and still a terrifying army that, while, you know, basic, is truly threatening against Zaun's army when Zaun tries to move out. So Zaun really can't. All he can do is these run bys, which are super easy for a laser to clean up. Yeah, super easy if a laser isn't attacking, and he doesn't really need to attack with all the things in hand that you mentioned. Zaun is going to go a little poke forward. I mean, it, it kind of feels like, he, yeah, it's dangerous, but it feels like he almost needs to do something because, again, otherwise a laser is just going to improve his tech. And then the one thing that Zaun has, which is better tech, right, is is kind of disappearing. I think the fact that a laser has 27 veins on the way is a huge note as well, though, right? Because it feels like all games so far, a laser hasn't really had a crazy good bane count. You know, there's been moments, but for a lot of the fights, it's just been very low amount of banes being very effective. Well, now we have a very good amount of veilings, and surely that should just be even scarier here. Of course, I'm not going to get taken out. <laughs> and of course, the vials. And Zaun actually did manage to find a decent number of disruptors once again. So it'd be certainly enough to safeguard four bases using these chokes, using the high ground. I think he will be pretty safe there. But you mentioned the teching up of a laser. Very deadly teching up with those vipers on the way. Going to totally negate disruptors and even this one colossus. Banelings roll in and will connect with the probes. They had plus two melee for quite some time. So kill the nexus, kill the probes. A laser might not be taking the best engagements anymore, though. And that is becoming increasingly worrying. Zaun has built up a decent Protoss army. All right, before it was still kind of small, so very vulnerable to being surrounded and overwhelmed, but now it's got a couple extra Archons, and that might be the big difference. And alongside the Disruptors, he is pushing forward, looking to make this a very scrappy ZBB. Yep, looking to take down a base, knock a laser down to four few roaches across the map, won't do much. And uh, yeah, I mean, Zaun just saying, well, my army at least still is pretty darn scary. It is something you've really got to respect at this stage. And it is true. I mean, we were kind of sat here saying, yeah, you, you, you can't just ignore it. It's definitely scary. It's kind of terrifying. It's just the fact that if he wants to do anything, he does have to go on creep. And then a laser has that speed difference. That's going to make a big difference usually. And then you've got the vipers now in play. Kind of, yeah, a little bit all over the place, actually. I mean, Zaun is absolutely staying in this well enough. Can he take this fight? I mean, we're about to find out. He seems to decide this is the one chance that he's got. At least it does have a counterattack to deny the rebuild on the fourth. So, yeah, it does become maybe the real opportunity now for Zaun to get something done. Wayne's not going to be able to cancel that War Prism. That would have been really nice to help out in the defensive, because the laser still has a tricky fight ahead of him, even though he's got these abducts that are brilliant, and he's getting some of these free picks, not actually engaging. Eventually, he might have to engage, which actually, you know what, I think it might go okay. One Disruptor Shot does manage to get sent out and gets an okay shot, but... Ah, okay. I mean, I was going to say, Zaun was getting a <laughs> little disjointed, right? But actually, mm -hmm. the power of his army, even as it kind of gets away from each other, is still there. So many Archons, so many Charge Lots, not a lot of Banelings. The last one just got popped. The last Disruptor also died, but Archons and Immortal, just a handful of Zealots, might actually be enough, and he actually still has one more Disruptor, in fact, so that could come into play a little bit later on. It's not the focus anymore. So even if it, it lives or not, it's not the point. Zaun manages to push through with the remnants of his army, barely on three bases, and actually win that game. Damn. Yeah, I got kind of impressed, right? I mean, it was a, a wild game for sure. It was a lot of fun, but I did think at some point I was like, ah, surely a laser's comfortable now. There's just not enough for Zaun. He lost his base again. He got up to a crazy amount of Archons at the very end there, and that's one thing that a laser never really had a good answer to. And especially when the Zealots weren't dealt with quickly. And at the very end, right, he just didn't have any Banelands left, so you can't bust through that Zealot line. 
The Archon's going to do tons of damage. I think Archon's probably the MVP of this entire game for Zam, because they're a big reason why he held earlier as well. They did so much against those Roaches when they yeah. dove that Disruptor. So, uh, yeah, the Archon's the MVP for Zaun and able to give him a 1-0 lead here in the elimination round here in the TSL9. That was a pretty fun game. Yeah, that was actually really awesome. <laughs> it was a very, very typical ZVP, which for a laser, I think we can expect him to be the quantity over quality, mm -hmm. just really big pusher of the, of the mid game, uh, especially given the opportunity. But for Zao, and I think it can go either way. He could do something in the early game, like an adept build, or yeah, you know, he can do blinks probably as well as well, even as well as hero, but as well as other Protosses. Um, but in instead that game, he did choose to go for a bit more of a macro setup. Still kind of weird overall game plan with the the faster mm -hmm. robotic spay, but then not even all that much committal on robotic spay. It was a very slow build up of a one robo for a very long time. And no pressure, right? But uh it mm -hmm. worked out. And yeah, a lot because of those Archons and the almost bait shield battery. Yeah, I was kind of... Um... <laughs> yeah, no, that, that was definitely a, a change of moment. I completely forgot what I was about to say. So you know what? Let's do the intro so we can number two instead. And no one will ever know any different. In the bottom left, Ayala Protoss play who is up 1-0. This is Zaun. It's up, right? As the purple Zerg, it is a laser. I think what I was going to say is that I was kind of happy to see a laser at least identifying when he could tech up and move off that kind of low tech army, right? Like get in the hive. And it was definitely the right time to do it as well. It's just didn't quite have enough to hold on against the large army. But I think without any vipers, he would have been in even more trouble. So, yeah, kind of nice just to see he wasn't, like, fully set on, like, oh, I just have to kill him, I have to go, and he's like, okay, I can tech up and, like, still play fairly aggressively, but, like, get some kind of spell casting to help me out and to, to help close it out in general. So, I like that part of the plan, just obviously didn't quite come through to, uh, through to fruition. Couple of things different, man. Couple more Archons taken out or not built. Maybe he mm -hmm. chooses Colossus over more Archons and... Even though Colossus are also good, and maybe it would have been fine too. I, don't, I, I do think they'd have a different place, and they would have interacted very differently yeah. in that game, and that might have been what caused Zaun to buckle under the pressure. That's certainly what oh, yeah. Colossus do. They have very skinny legs. <laughs> they do have skinny legs, don't they? Yeah, well, apparently Archons do too, which I feel like is... A point against Archons them. Archons don't have legs. What? They do, because that's what Brood War no Remastered way. showed. Okay, this is, this is the exact point that I was going to make, right? So in, in Brood War, before it got remastered, people were just like great balls of energy with like this awesome kind of torso thing, right? And there was like a, the Void Cinematic. Oh my goodness, I see it. Yeah. It's terrifying. And, like, so the Void Cinematic kind of confirmed that it's just like this big awesome thing, right? And then Remastered comes out and they're like, it has legs and feet. And you're like, no. And it's like, yeah. It's like, well, that's can, much can we worse. Pretend, can we just pretend that... Uh... <laughs> Remaster is like fan fiction or something. <laughs> <laughs> it's not. It's not real unless we. <laughs> it is surely not. That's I, insane. I mean, even I, I. I guess the Brood War artists and or the StarCraft One artists would be really specific, and the StarCraft Two artists weren't all the same people. Yeah. So, I think I got to go with StarCraft Two for this one, though, right? Like a lot of people hey. give credit to StarCraft One for its. Um, less comical kind of cartoony style but i gotta say i think starcraft 2 artist one there not giving the archon legs but yeah, yeah the archon with legs looks actually like a joke man <laughs> honestly it looks like <laughs> it looks like some skinny guys trying to climb out of a pool like ah save you know some like big beast of energy that's gonna rip you to shreds yeah oh, it's funny there's like there's definitely some meme in there for sure yeah. it's like i uh yeah I also think that the Lurker got done a bit dirty in, in both Remastered and StarCraft 2. Because honestly, with the pixelated pixels of StarCraft 1, the Lurker could be just this like chitinous, plated, insect cool thing, right? Kind of a little bit left of your imagination. But then StarCraft 2 came out, and I don't know, they gave it more like rounds. So I just, every time I look at a Lurker, mm. especially when it waddles and it's like waddly butt, it's like a little, um, <laughs> what's those dogs called? Oh, like the the short ones, uh, the sausage dogs. Corgis. It's like a corgi. Oh, the corgi. Okay. Yeah. Look, yeah. <laughs> 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 like a corgi. <laughs> I mean, they are the funniest unit when they're just walking around, right? It's only when they burrow are they really scary. 
I've, you know, honestly, I've never really noticed, but I feel like StarCraft team might have changed forever on this day for me. <laughs> Archons with I'm legs, excited. lurkers with quirky butts. <laughs> I, I'm very excited to see someone build a lurker now. Like, uh... I want to see a little corgi butt lurker run, running around the map. I, I, I swear, man. The way that it waddles. A little swiggly, swiggly, boodly. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, I don't think a is going to be the one we see lurkers on, unfortunately. No, I don't feel like that really matches what he likes to do. You know, we have seen Lurkers a little bit in PvZ as of late, but it is also one of those things where you have to play the right style for it, and it's just not really a style that a laser plays, right? So, would be surprised if we saw that. Zaun is just setting up into the Void Ray and Oracle this time, then into the Twilight and the Robo. Once again, we'll see what comes out of that. This looks like a laser is going to change things up as well. The Roach one coming down as primary concern. Uh, and it makes sense since Zaun has opened up a little bit more, perhaps ambiguously with the Void Array. But also perhaps because of the last game. Not that plus two melee is not something that Zergs die for versus any type of Protoss player, I suppose. But it has been a lot, you know, against Blink Stalker openers. So while well, that didn't, I, didn't, I think, undercut a laser's position at all, I just. I do wonder if perhaps he had wished to go a different direction against what Zaun ultimately threw at him. So, just throwing it out there, different pacing, right? Maybe he goes for the plus one missile and then a big Ling Roach swell right here as he realizes more and more what's going on. But no, it's going to be plus one melee again. Yeah, I'm just going to go kind of set that up. I mean, there's so much power in the melee upgrades, right? Like, the, the ability just to kind of go through and say, cool. Play melee, I'm gonna get plus two, and my balance will just destroy mineral lines. It's yeah. just so fun. I mean, it's, not, it's not just good, it's just it's fun as well, right? Like, it's enjoyable <laughs> as a circ to see that. So, I can understand this melee being a very popular choice at the moment. Because you do have the Archon drop completely missed by a laser. So, he's gonna go across the map. There's a couple of adepts over here on Adept, a Void Ray, and a battery. And the links say, well, there's a lot of us, so maybe you won't be able to hold here. And we're gonna get the pylon to start. Now, gonna start maybe going for the adept, a few probes. Super battery pops and at the same time. The Archon drop is heading to the main. Oracles die though across the map. Five probes fell. I feel like so far this is good for a laser, but let's see what happens with the Archon drop. As, as Alice get warped in too, this might be where a laser doesn't have much defense. I brought this up as a potential of last game, or you know, what. A lot of Protosses would have done, and then Zaun just didn't do it, basically. He just added on the Robotics Bay and stayed defensive, but now actually going for the Archon charge, that warping is creating some complications. A laser might have gotten a Roach Warren under the threat of an attack, but didn't actually get the Roaches. As again, he had missed that Warp Prism, but it is turning into another kind of weird, scrappy game as Ling's out into the natural and into the main base for a laser. And a laser finally pumped out some roaches to throw back the warp prism. Charge lots got cleaned up. Archons have to skedaddle. And I guess there's a recall, or he doesn't figure he needs the recall, which is fair enough. But unfortunately, multitasking right now, not really working out for Zaun. Yeah, I mean, I look at this and it's like, well, 18 probes going down to less than 10 drones. I think a couple more drones now, but it does feel like a laser came out on the better end of this. Okay, these last few Archon shots have been very good. Now the fourth base in a bit of trouble, but obviously we do have the roaches, like you mentioned. And so this should never really be as troubling as it once was for our Zerg player who should, in theory, just with Roaches push back the majority of these attacks from here on out. Right. So at the end of the day, Zaun certainly took more damage and a laser. Again, I feel like we're in this position where lasers need to be necessarily all that worried about being pushed, although the War Prism is still alive and... I mean, double-pronged attacks could still do damage, but I think a main attack, like a big push from Zao, would be quite dangerous since he'd be moving a very high-tech army, not a very big army, across the map into open space against a laser who, I think, for all of Zao knows, yes, he's getting a decent bit of scouting with War Prism harassment, but still, for all he knows, it's, it's just maxing out. He's just maxing out and not really focusing on anything else. But, of course, that is not actually what's quite happening. A laser's getting hatcheries and drones while still also probably going to max out. But yeah, Zaun just can't do very much other than fly around with the warp prism. So. Yeah. Pretty uh, pretty limited in terms of what he can achieve at this stage. As a laser, his numbers are ramping up, of course. There's plus two melee and bane speed on the way out. We kind of know when he wants to be aggressive and we kind of know what he wants to do, right? He just wants to fling units at the bases of Zaun and see what connects. 
And uh, Zan is pretty much just prepping to deal with that. Disruptor's on the way, right? I mean, one thing that Zan doesn't have yet is a fourth base. And, you know, it kind of starts getting to the point where it's almost too late to take the fourth base. Because when you have a fourth base, you kind of want to be backed up by, like, a battery and cannons and stuff, right? But... Mm -hmm. The establishment of stack defense, I feel like, is not going to be on a fourth base in time to deal with this attack of a laser. So then, when do you get a fourth base up? How do you defend a fourth base? It almost feels problematic. It's the really weird thing for any race. When it comes to, I guess, choosing a macro versus army production, moving out versus staying home. I make a Zerg a lot for that, but even for Zaun, if he had pushed the fourth base faster, perhaps there's already stacked defense there, right? But now, to your point, yeah, it's, a, it's more in question. But we do have some more aggression coming out from Zaun, despite not having the biggest army and actually missing a pickup there as well. He did still look for an opportunity. Oh, gosh, that's plus two melee. All those probes are dead. No saving them. Goodbye. Okay, one. <laughs> wow. You know what? <laughs> still, 35 went down overall. Yeah, okay. Um... Yeah, I mean, this... I mean, honestly, I feel like Zaun's just got to go with his army, but obviously that's not really ideal. You're pushing in a creep, there's a lot to do. Uh, your army's just kind of better defensively. Disruptors are, Archons are... I mean, you're force fielding for three roaches, which is nice, but it's not exactly a great sign of the times for yourself, right? So, yeah, let's see. Uh, oh. So, oh, we're just going to blow up our own Archons and Disruptors as well. Okay, Zaun really doesn't want to win this one. This does look more and more like we are going to see a game three here in this uh, best of three because this army of sound just kind of feels like it shouldn't be able to really do much. We've got the Banes about to show up as well. Disruptors have already fired. The Archons are low. He killed a base and at the same time the fourth base of Zaun will fall. Static defense non-existent there. Nothing to save these units apparently. The Disruptors die and that's GG's. The laser ties up one to one. And again, that was just, quite frankly, he got a counterattack in when he was starting to take damage, and his counterattack did more than the Archon Zealot attack achieved. Right, the run by was far more devastating. I think it also yeah. did more damage. I think it also made it so the Zaun couldn't micro his own attack uh, yeah. nearly as well. Right, so you can micro the Archons, send the Zealots back, we another big Zealot round, suddenly the Roaches aren't enough numbers. It could be a lot worse, and I actually thought that was going to be a lot more questionable, but the dust kind of settled very clearly in a laser's favor. So Zaun mm -hmm. was tasked with playing absolutely perfectly from that point on, so perfect harassment, perfect micro, uh, perfect choice of timing on the fourth base, which, yeah, I think was at the end of the day too late. Um, he was behind, so whether he gets it up and running or not might not matter, but yeah, I think he was preparing for perhaps an laser who was already maxing out, kind of was talking about it, and then actually it was a laser still building up a little bit, and the max that was going to come a minute later, and that's the time that you get a stack defense up and so on and so forth, but then Zaun attacked anyways, lost a bunch of supply, and fairly easy game to call after that. Yeah, very easy game to call. So uh, we will be diving on into... Our final map of this ZVP, one player is about to fall out of the Shopify TSL9 and the other will move on through to a match tomorrow, which will not be easy, obviously. I mean, the winner of this ends up against the winner of Clement Special, which is our last series of the day after this ZVP as well. So it's going to be a tough one to fight for the offline finals, but absolutely doable, especially in the world of best of threes, right? I mean, in best of threes, anything is possible. Really? I can beat Cyril in a best of three? Yes. Much more so than in a best of five. That's I. There was meant to be some like background, sort of like baseline, <laughs> <laughs> you know, assumptions in this statement. But you know what, ZG, if you want to fight Cyril, <laughs> I will believe at some point you would win a best of three. I actually think so. Well, I wouldn't win a best of anything. To be clear, I might win a map. Two maps out of five hundred. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. Uh, but someone had asked me, you know, in a best of sixty-nine. Could I, you know, take a map off of here, Marine, out of 100 games or whatever it was? And I was like, you know what? I think I actually could. Because I think what would happen is that here, Marine, we get really bored <laughs> after, like, the yeah, yeah, exactly. 20th win. And they just do mm -hmm. really silly. And I would actually be playing kind of, sort of, maybe decent-ish. Yeah. And then I just actually would be able to kill him before he was able to macro out. And I was like, that's how I'd win one game in 100 against here, Marine. Yeah, that, that, that's exactly what I think when uh, we have these theoretical situations arise, I'm like, they would start caring 
less. Or they would stop caring way before we would. So <laughs> maybe that's our opportunity, right? That's the one thing we can, you know, grab onto and never let go of. Yeah. Uh, crazy things happen. Top left. Cosmic Sapphire. A laser. Bottom right down. <laughs> Thank you, ZG. I think I can Appreciate use it. Observer. I, I was wondering who we were casting as well, but once again, you've nailed the intros, and now I'm aware. I mean, there are people who listen, like at the office. There are people who listen, to be fair, yeah. School or But I mean, like, like if they listen for two more minutes, they'll hear us say Zaun is about to do this, then they'll hear us always about to do that. Ah, but picturing it in their mind. In their minds, the minimap locations, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's yeah. the arguments people make to me as well, I'm like, it's not a bad argument. But it's also like, do you need to know who's in which corner? Yeah. Maybe. And there's that one Probably, unfortunate soul who... There's one person who has, like, perfect, like, picturesque mem memory, and they can just be like, yeah, I can imagine this perfectly based on the cast oh. I'm watching the probe walk across the map. <laughs> I was going to go opposite. I was going to say that one person who has that, that thing where you can't imagine anything at all. Like, you just <laughs> can't see anything in your, in your mind. <laughs> and they're just completely lost all the time while they're at work. <laughs> Shout out to you, man. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh my god, I just... I, someone in chat just said, is that a 24-pack of monster? I just looked at your camera on the delay. And I'm like, oh my god, you just whacked it onto a chair. You're like, look, it's the sponsor. <laughs> yep. Yeah, I was wondering if someone was ever going to notice that. Yeah, turn up and sneaky sneak this entire time. Just like a casual, oh. like, uh, Herman Miller Aeron chair is my monster holder. Far more <laughs> important things. The, the monster holder. <laughs> Thank you. How much I love monster monster. deserves a seat on the cast. Yep. Brilliant. <laughs> Anyways. So if I could uh, light you. my chair on fire to have the hot seat by Secret Lab, I would. I don't think they'd like that. Yeah, I feel like, yeah, I feel like that's gonna get very expensive for them. They have to send you a new chair every <laughs> season. They're like, can you stop setting it on fire? But, oh, it's the hot seat. It's your segment. Like, <laughs> it's not worth it. <laughs> Imagine that chaos. I mean, we would go to live stream fails immediately. I would get so much attention on Starcraft. Talent lights chair on fire, proceeds to burn down house. All for the sake. You know what they sponsors. say though, like. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes, you know, just because it gets a lot of views doesn't mean it was worth having a lot of views. <laughs> All publicity is not good publicity? It's shocking. Well, you know what it is? There's, there's a discussion we've had in like a Dreamhack call once about a certain uh, sponsorship announcement that went wrong and Roddy was like, just because it got a lot of views doesn't mean it, you know, <laughs> it's a good thing because, and then he proceeds to say something quite, uh, explicit that I'm not going to say on stream <laughs> as an example of what he could do that would get a lot of views <laughs> which would not go down well and I was, every time now I think of that I'm like yep not a lot of views doesn't necessarily mean it's good oh man you see it's kind of funny because it's like I feel like we're encouraged to be more cat I mean we're just we're being little clowns on, on cast today for sure yeah. <laughs> but it's not really like home straight cup right no. So I both want to and don't want to say the exact analogy he, he used. Because <laughs> you know exactly what I'm talking about, <laughs> yeah. right? <laughs> it was so good, and he said it so convincingly. <laughs> <laughs> that, that might be one for another day. Yes. Top 10 <laughs> Roddy moments so the chat won't know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, anyways. Yeah, I'm not, not going to risk getting fired from TSL for this. Yeah, right, right. Anyways, my last one lined in. I already have my flight boot for offline, so I think I'm good. <laughs> this is why they don't book it as... Oh, wait a minute. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> now we're getting too much into details. Uh, we got Blink on the way. We got Zaun going for a lot of gateways and no Forge and not a lot of probes. Oh, I actually still have building probes. It's still no Forge. So uh, do we have a Robo? Wonderful observers who've actually been paying attention to the game. No. So if this is going to be a big attack, then I do wonder, you know, where's the setup for the, the proxy gateway? She usually would accompany something like this. There you go. Perfect timing. We're talking about the game when it's important. It. Yeah. Yeah. We've nailed it. The five minute, 45 second transition. Seven drones dead. Gates are finishing. Stalkers are coming up. 
It's all about to get serious right now. Yes, it is. Uh, I'm actually kind of surprised that Zaun is pulling this out for game number three on one of the largest maps as well, which, you know, I guess maybe isn't as important as is, you know, how well can you push into an opponent's base? Because if you don't... The lineup here is kind of difficult to do. I feel like there's actually better maps for the lineup of, of pushing and getting your proxy gateway up, but it might not matter if it's just a big surprise anyways, right? So that's why Zalan is choosing to go for it. A laser, I don't think I actually understood it was on the cards up until this very moment, trying to now get as many links as possible, actually building Ravagers, which what we hopefully would have been built way before this push even came. A laser is definitely on the ropes. Yep, the Stalkers put on a lot of pressure. The Oracles here is good support. Just gotta stay a little bit careful. They don't get hit by the Queens. We've got extra reinforcements coming straight in here. So Zaun really is just gonna be able to keep this pressure going. That game's about to finish too. So these Stalkers are gonna warp in fast. He does lose both Oracles, however. And that is a lot of damage against Lings, which falls off now. Link counterattack doesn't apply much, but can maybe just come in as a surround instead. Might be worthwhile. Actually, yeah. I think that would be really good. I mean, even Cake taking all the pylon, right? Mm -hmm. That'd be probably one of the best things to do, but a laser not thinking he has the opportunity probably to do so. I think he might. I mean, Zaun will eventually have to push even deeper to the left side, leaving his proxy gateway even more exposed. But a laser once again committing to the run by gets the shield battery, looks to target fire the probes, injure the economy. So the aggression, even if it starts to build some momentum, can't actually carry through with the momentum. Yeah, this is uh, a few battles that's nice as well. Just keeps that army of Zaun back a little bit, and the probe's going down again on that bottom base. Just slowing Zaun down, which is all you got to do right now. Slow him down that little bit. Try and keep him on this army and, you know, keep yourself able to fight and just keep him back wherever possible. It's uh, maybe not quite enough, though, from a laser, right, as these stalker numbers are kind of crazy. They are getting so much damage done. Actually, it might have already tipped the scales. Number of Ravagers is usually a really important part in the defense, but I'd say that's kind of an old school mentality for this matchup, right? The, the Ravagers, maybe, while they are still scary, they have that ability, literally, to go on a corrosive bile to open up some space for themselves. They're also a bit more glass cannony. You can't get that many of them, so the numbers do start to tip in favor of the Protoss player who keeps all their stalkers alive, you know, in a perfect game plan. And it's really, you know, can the numbers of Lings get a surround? Can they actually get some damage done? Can they actually get the final kill shot on the stalkers? which might not have happened enough times. These Ravagers looking increasingly more vulnerable. As you look at the supplies, down even blinks aggressively forward. A little bit dangerous to do, but if it gets some one or two more Ravagers, that might just be it for a laser. I love the three Zealots on that uh, base on the picture in picture two. It's just the right amount of pressure. It takes a little bit too much to go and deal with that because you don't really want to send your Lings there and lose them because you kind of need the Lings in the front tanking for these Ravagers instead. I mean, now it means you're going to lose that base. That's obviously not great. It's just a way for Zao to kind of make a laser have to make one of two bad choices. Either you save the base or you let the base die. Either way, like, you know, saving the base has a bad consequence to it. And Ravagers keep on dying now as well. We're oh just going to jump forward on the Ravagers as Zao believes he's got enough. The base has died. And these drones are going to pull in to pretty much no avail. As Zao really did just power up in this game. And, well, really never let up from that point on. And at this stage, Link's streaming in are likely to die. Zaun will take it two to one.